Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Apa khabar semua? Uh, saya harap dan doakan everyone safe at home or whatever you you are now. Uh, don't take for granted. Be safe and please adhere to the SOP extremely. You know, you will never know in this world now. Yes, COVID-19 will bring about a lot of things to all of us. Uh, the pandemic, there is always good and bad thing about things like this. On the bad side, I think you all know already, kita tak payah nak cerita panjang lah on the bad side. And the stress level and whatnot. And economically, uh, we are affected. Whatnot. But there's always a silver lining behind all this kind of thing. I believe so. So the good thing about COVID is that now at least uh, we can do something like this. You know, I'm talking live to you from my room at home and you may be listening either from at home as well or in the office. So there's, there's always a good thing about pandemic, like COVID-19 pandemic. So don't be sad, but you have to be alive follow the instruction, follow the SOP, and inshallah we will pull this through. Okay, today, I would like to share about you, you can see at the top there, okay, read in the park. What is that, uh, read in the park? Before I continue with that, let me explain a little bit. One of the things that we were glad is that, I think somewhere late last year or early this year, it was announced that KL has been awarded as the World Book Capital for 2020. So the period is, I think, about a year from earlier the year from March, April to next year, March or April 2021. So we were delighted, actually, ecstatic to a certain extent. You know, after IFLA and all that, and then suddenly UNESCO awarded KL as World Book Capital. Of course, PPM bullish about it and really want to take part in this to celebrate this momentous moment where KL is being awarded as World Book Capital for 2020. We plan, we sat down and plan a lot of things and of course now you know what's happened because of the pandemic we have to somewhat tune our plan and execute it accordingly. We plan to have serious and various event, face-to-face -face event, beginning of May, up leading to uh, next year, uh, April. But unfortunately, we cannot have that. So we redesigned the whole thing, and this is what we have. You know that for the past week or past day, you have been seeing or hearing a viewing uh, event from various locations under the banner of KL, WBC 2020. So there's two parts about that. The big chunk is that handled by Pon Hasnita, which what you see uh, previously, and also moving forward towards the end of the year, where you have um, talk, you have event from various universities, from various libraries, and all that. We have to plan in such a way you now. The other big component in our planning was actually what we call here read in the park. So read in the park is actually a physical face-to-face -face event that we are going to do actually actually in the real park in KL. But because of the pandemic, we cannot do that. Earlier, we thought we can do it in September, no, we can't. Then all these things brought up to this moment. So. What we can do at the moment is for me to create the awareness so that inshallah early next year we can have that main event in the park in KL. Probably the biggest park in KL. Okay, Tasik Berdana. All right, before that, let us talk about, I'm gonna use uh, my slide, talk about what do we mean by green in the park. I'm going to discuss a bit of science about reading in the park, read, park, nature, and what so on. 
So if you have any question, yes, please do so. Just write down your question here. Yeah? And my colleague at the background will help to pop up the question. I'll try to answer accordingly. Okay. Rip in the park. What do you mean by read in the park? While I'm, I was growing up back in the old days in the kampung, I don't know whether, I think some of us would have that the same experience where you will be freely walking, running around at the backyard, which particularly a small jungle or even a stream and, and whatnot catching fish and whatnot as well. And to a certain extent, I confess that actually, that is my classroom. Growing up, I did not go to any Kumar study car, whatever. So my backyard in the kampong, the paddy field, the rivers, the jungle, the plantation were actually my playing fields. Okay, I had fun actually. And until years later, of course, I realized that that was the happiest moment in my life. Actually. Not only being a kid, but actually in a surrounding where actually I can really be vibrant, energized. And I was just, it's a different total me, actually. I realized that years ago when I was working very hard, Okay, and with all the stress of the work and whatnot, and yes, what happened to me actually in that sense? And one day, actually, I happened to be walking in the park somewhere when by now I realized that a lot of us also do that. Some of us do hiking, mountain climbing, camping, riding a bike, in jungle. and frame is one of the busiest places in the weekend back then, and until, until now as well, I think. So when I think, when I reflect about that life and all that, I say, this must be something big about this nature that we take for granted. Yes, we take for granted, we assume that it's good for us and all that, but why? That is when I started to dig out and try to read and research and what actually the nature, the trees actually do to us, okay? So this is mainly, the slide that I'm going to share, firstly, about the strategy behind re in the park and then follow that by the sign behind why actually we are proposing re in the park. If you want to develop a future society that is actually a reading society, we have been talking about this so many years, we need to really to understand what is that reading ecosystem. Mind you, I do not intend to be comprehensive here. Actually, I can't actually because there's so many things component in that. So I'm just capturing the main uh, part and main points of that. For reading ecosystem, an ecosystem to be successful, has to be natural, has to be, to be uh, flowing nicely, has to be team and whatnot. So when we look at this reading ecosystem, couple of things that's really very important surrounding it. First, of course, the infrastructure what kind of infrastructure that we need to have okay, to enable us to be a reading society. Secondly, partners and stakeholders. Certainly. I think partners and stakeholders work closely and all that. So it cannot be so much interrelated, intertwined, you cannot really demarcate these two. Of course, having partners, stakeholder infrastructure, you need program or event to run to create awareness firstly, to create understanding and to get people into it, into doing what we're super doing and make it a natural part of our life, make it a habit. That's what the meaning of ecosystem. Your ecosystem being based on the habit, the habit of human mankind. You talk about any system whatsoever, it's just that pure uh, natural sign behind it. Of course, the other thing that you can put under this ecosystem is policy and, as, and assessment. 
as I said early on, for partners and stakeholders, again, I don't want to be, I do not mean to be comprehensive because I, if I were to put everything here, I am going to be a very busy slide. So in general, the partners and stakeholders at the same time are the parents, teachers. Okay, if we do not get these two group of people into the ecosystem to be system, I think it's not that we cannot do it, but a bit more difficult. It's better for them to be our partner and stakeholder at the same time. So that's why I put it parents and teacher uh, network. Secondly, the local authority and the communities themselves. Definitely, they have to play a big role. My recent Adventure in Sarawak proved me this point very much. You need the authority, you need the communities to be really involved and you need to pull in the communities to bring in and so that they will be part of this ecosystem habitually. Of course, to start all this beside parents and teachers, the school students are basically students need to be involved and we need to touch them as well. At the bank, there are the two actually MOE and of course other organizations like GBKN where we read in the park is very much part of partner in this. So we need to collaborate with almost every strategic partners that we can identify to make this possible. When we talk about infrastructure, there are a lot more other infrastructure that I'll just pick the big one. Of course, primarily public, community, and home libraries. I think we have gone big with public and community libraries. I think the DBKL also doing a good job in the KL area, Klangari area, as well as Lango, trying to create this web of libraries within the communities. Okay. But maybe the other component of that library that we're going to go big is actually the home libraries. That's where when we start at home, uh, we build that environment and home and it will flow into the society or the communities. The other component is material collection based on needs. Maybe that's together with infrastructure and policy. So that's why I put it closely like as such. So maybe we need to rethink about the material, the collection, and most of the time could be based on needs. Of course, now being in the world that we live in, it has to be material that is interactive, innovative, as innovative, as interactive as it can be, depending on the time and the tools that we use. Policy enhancement, assessment, First clean, that's why this is one, because this is really interlinked with one another. That's why I put it in this color, conducive reading environment and home corner. So I impress that point again, the home corner. Okay. What, what sort of environment that you're trying to create here or we're gonna have? So that's why when we talk about science, maybe you can learn a lot and combine whatever we understand about a library world, information sign, and the natural sign, maybe you can bring something that is really, really hit the name. Okay. Guideline for home library and collection, probably you need to start to create greater awareness for this. Reading, profiling, and assessment too. And in blue here are the events that we have so far. I mean, we have Reading 6 program, uh, we have influential literacy, and we have also Bilbo therapy, continue uh, the NILAM from the school side, maybe we need to continue and broaden the scope, okay? Whatever it is, this is event program that will bring about the society or the community into the ecosystem, making it natural. So we need to spend a bit more time here, I guess, and apart from just sending the program, the key thing that I would think is very important is actually creating the right awareness, the right fact and sign behind all this so that we, not only us, but of course our stakeholders will understand why. So this is where 
a read in the back is coming. Okay, now I'm going to go to explain the idea behind this. Okay, when we plan and think just about this, when we do walk in the park, actually all of this, some of us are actually doing it. I'm sorry, there's an error that spelling there again. Okay, trail walking, several uh, interval games and picnic, I think they create several activities like uh, awareness, briefing, discussion, demonstration, if in literacy, knowledge sharing, reading, and even storytelling. I will expand on this later. Read in the park, actually, is an outcome based objective. It's actually a change management event. If you think about it, all the program that we have done and what we're planning to do is actually a lot of it to do with change management. Changing of our culture, prodding, trying to get people, get the community to into the space where we have been talking about reading and being a reading society. Okay. So most of our event is actually it's this. Other or not, we have bibliotherapy and all that. Other or not, we have book talk, uh, discussion, why not? First and foremost is actually about changing our understanding about things, changing the importance about why we're doing this, and changing things that what we are doing and that we should move into something new. So read in the park as an event, if you, you were to do it in the park, real environment, it's about enhancing awareness. Firstly, actually why read in the park and why we need to be a reading society and why we need to encourage most of us, especially our family, to read and read a lot. And also at the same time, of course, at the end of it, to be a knowledge-based society. Relationship and outcome. Relationship here is actually we were talking about the stakeholders that we're going to bring in. That's where we're going to create that relationship or greater relationship, I would say, so that you can move forward uh, on, a, on a solid footing based on our standing of everything. So read in the park, whatever other event we're going to do uh, under the banner of KLWBC, 2020 is a lot about change management event. Okay, let's talk about garden, park, and nature. Why actually get it? I think reflecting on what I just said earlier on, I think you all of you experience the same thing. Sometimes you just wonder why when you're actually in your garden at home, talking to your flowers, okay? And you, you just feel refreshed you get this some sort of high feeling that's actually you cannot explain. And to a certain level, you so your stress level actually decrease. And you are, I'm pretty sure you are happy. Because I experience this myself whenever I'm in my garden, well, a small one, or any park, and of course in nature, when I go, camping, climbing up to the waterfall, playing in the rivers, and so on and so forth. Everyone actually agree that actually nature, park, garden do something to us which is very positive. But we do not really understand why. Why? To me as well. I do not know why. I cannot explain it. I just know the difference. I have that experience. But I just cannot put a sign behind it. So let us talk about the sign that I discovered about nature and us. This is from an article by Jackie Holder, The Soul, the soul of Nature. He said, when I'm in the company of trees, I feel a surge of power and groundness, groundedness that activates a deeply rooted confidence I really felt that actually. We know from research 
that spending a little as 15 minutes with trees lower cortisol levels. Okay, later on I explain what is that cortisol level boost the immune system and reduces anxiety. When I am among the trees, my body naturally slows down and I find myself assessing generative part of myself. This actually captured my feeling, Nathan. Captured my feeling to the sense that now, yes, you may be able to describe this and put this in, but the most important line here actually is that this is based on research and you need to only spend about 15 minutes Just like you, I love to read, and these are the four books that actually I found. Then I read and trying to get to understand what it means. The first one, actually, Shilin Yoku, The Art of Forest Bedding. This is from Japanese and research, research, and research. I'm going to use a lot of this today here. In fact, I did. I did a book review somewhere in April, if I'm not mistaken, about this. And maybe you have access to my IP, or maybe if I shared it at Sembang Pustakawan, maybe you can go and search for it, and later on you can uh, view it again. But today I'm going to focus a lot of Shinoyoku as well. The second book, actually, that I know so much is that this book, by Peter Hollenberg, sorry, okay, The Hidden Lives of Trees. You'll be amazed when you read this book, I tell you. The author is actually a forester. Okay. His life, he's been working with trees, looking after uh, forests, and to actually see the thing happen and all that. So as a forester, forester, actually, he discovered a lot of things. And a part of discovery, he molded into a research, and that is the base of this book. It's a wonderful reading. I fully encourage for you to read this. And once I understand a little bit about trees, actually, the life of trees, actually, then I can relate it to the sign of maybe Shani Yoko and other things and reflect in my life, now we can understand further. The third book, actually, this is quite recent. Welcome to your world. How the built environment shape our life. Sarah William uh, Kohagen is actually an architect. When he designed town, park, or whatever it is, building, over time, she realizes actually through her research, through her life, what we actually build around us actually form the environment and create a society, a community based on that landscape. We actually drawn to the landscape. We actually evolve around the landscape and make the space the landscape, the design is actually, uh, what's the right word? Mac is what it is today, actually. If we have been living in town, the scale, the hardship, the cement, the building actually is the one actually that also develop us. Okay, maybe that's not the right word, but I think you know what I mean. So the environment actually create us in a way. So based on, on her study and her work actually, she helped to design parks and all that and bring in a lot more nature in into the city because they know the edges, the sub edges will form, uh, establish why system society is so hard feeling uh, with certain behavior, certain reaction, because part of it because of the environment that we have created for ourselves. 
last but not least, the fourth book is actually The Well Garden Mind. Okay, you from the title, I think you can understand that this person, this lady, Sue, Sue Stuart Smith, actually, uh, well, I can't remember her profession, but basically, in her spare time, she actually build her own garden, nurture the garden, you know, as every morning you go talk, you man, maintain your garden, you water your plants, you talk to them and whatnot. And over time, he grew and managed to build a very <laughs> nice garden for, for her and change her. You know, by virtue of being around trees and all that, change her to the extent all about her and herself change and her perspective of the world change. Again, not limited to these four books. I actually fully encourage all of us actually to read this kind of read. To understand, to understand the sign and all this. So when I was approached to lead this project or program by PPM, so now I have to understand when all this triggered my thought actually. So we have sort of other different event already. So why not we do? And in fact, PPM suggested why we not do something like re in the park. Okay. Let me continue. Now, as I say, I'm going to go to specific Sirinyoku with a Japanese word for forest bedding. What is Sirinyoku? Actually, Sirinyoku, by definition, is actually just us go into a walk, a trail in the nature and just walk and be immersed with the nature, the trees, the bird, you can see this. Can see the bird flying, the insects moving around, the wind blowing against the tree, the sound, you listen to the sound and all that. Just do that for 15 minutes or more and walk around the jungle. So I guess to those that do trail walking, hiking, uh, whatever is along that line, you're not wrong. But once you understand this, I think it's going to be even more powerful for you. Okay, scientifically proven, this is the gist from this book actually. Forest bedding or sharing your or walking in the park among trees, among the nature actually boost, boosted our immune system with actually basically increase the count of our body's natural killer cells, short NK. And because of this, actually, it reduced blood pressure, reduced stress, definitely, improve on the body's positive side, as I explained early on, improve our mood, increase ability to focus even for children with ADHD. I think all of us should try this. Accelerated recovery from surgery or illness, increase energy level, and improve sleep. Yeah, this has been proven scientifically. Okay. Regularly, if you regularly practice this, okay, if you have been walking the trail weekly or almost or frequently, regularly, this is what should happen to you. Deeper and clearer intuition. You're thinking, your clear mind, you have better grasp of the world and how you understand things around you. Increased flow of energy. Increased capacity to communicate with the, with the land and its species. Species, sorry. Increased flow of your own life force. Deepening of friendship. Overall increase in sense of happiness. I think the last point is really it's what really trigger for me to think and to reflect about all these things. So yes, nature, tree, park that we build means a lot to us. DBKL has built a lot of park in KL, a wonderful park. If you have not been to any or most of them go, actually, there's a lot of that. 
and really you can enjoy the park. Why and how to the extent? Okay, this is where I'm going to start uh, to use a bit of jargon terms and science behind the real science. The average concentration of uh, salivary cortisol, a stress hormone in all of us. Okay. Okay, this is what's gonna happen. Who gazed on forest scenery for 20 minutes was 13.4% lower than that of the people in the urban setting. So our stress hormone reduces by just looking out. Looking out at forest scenery or any parks, whatever. I think we know the phrase that room with a view. Why is that room with a view actually? So when we go to hotel, we always want a room with a view. One, we want to have an office, a room, a working environment, we want to have a view. This is why. Second, leisurely forest walk compared with urban walk. Okay, firstly, shows a 12 0.4% decrease in the cortisol, the stress hormone. 7% decrease in sympathetic nerve activity, ag, aginus and whatnot. 1.4% decrease in blood pressure. Okay, remember that's about 20 minutes, you know, not that much. What happens if you do it regularly, if not daily, regularly, then what? can do to your blood pressure and 5.8 percent decrease in heart rate that's the sign okay i put the link there if later on if, when i share the slide you can go and find out more in 20 in 2007 there is study and men for us to take, or actually the study men taking two hour walk in the wood over a two day period, okay? And what happened? 50% increase in the level of these NK cells, natural uh, killer cells. Two hours walk, 50% increase, just imagine. In 22008, 13 female nurses on a three day trip in which the trip produced anti cancer protein and benefit lasting more than seven days after the trip. Of course, the community, the scientific community, is still going to research on this, especially, especially about the enter, anti, sorry, anti uh, cancer protein. So as we talking now, actually research uh, currently uh, doing, especially scientists in Japan, trying to study and to get to understand more and more of this. Something that we assume that means something that we say that yeah, nature is good, working food. Now we have this understanding, the sign behind all this. The natural chemical secreted by evergreen trees, this is what tree can do to you. Okay. This is the tree, collectively known as uh, python side, okay, have been associated with improvement in the activity of our frontline immune defenders. It was measured the amount of python site in the air during the studies and correlated the content to improvement in the immune functioning. That's explaining the finding. Get close to the trees. Okay, that's some of the uh book about uh, forest 
Okay. But if you want to read more. There's a couple more slides on this. I think about two or three more. Just to explain, try to get and try to understand from different perspective why. Time and nature improve our mental performance. This is proven in one of the study done uh, on a group of our bound participants. Okay, that fifty percent better on creative problem solving tasks after three days on the wild wilderness backpacking. Strategic planning in nature. Maybe we can try. The reason why in our program, the young librarian camp that actually done in a natural environment. Based on this and a lot more, of course. Time in forest seems to significantly improve mood in countless studies replicated in variety of culture. Okay, they want to prove it within different culture, different society, communities. So they they did a couple of uh, studies. Okay, many studies have compared the psychological effect of urban walking versus nature walking, and found that nature walks tend to correlate with greater mood improvement. Just to build on that point that I mentioned uh, just now. I picked this from uh, Anna Elena Philip book, A Walk in the Wood. Okay. Evident bills that time spent in the natural world benefit human health. Uh, not, not a book, actually an article, sorry, an article in uh, American Scientist. One of the first and most well-known studies published in Science by Richard S. Aldrich in 1984 found that patients recovering from surgery in rooms with a window facing a natural setting had a shorter hospital stay and took less pain medicine than did patient whose window face a brick wall. I remember once actually, I was in a hotel room. Uh, I just booked it online. And, well, actually twice. Once I booked it online myself, not knowing, not realizing, oh, I failed in my research at that time. When I go into the room and I pull over the curtain, hoping to see a view, whatever, all I get is a brick wall of the next building. You know, you just, your heart, well, not your heart, but probably your expression drop, and you just, you can see in the pain in my face is the way you there. And the second uh, time, or maybe that was the first, was when actually somebody booked for me a room. And I went to the room, and again, when I opened the window, there you go, a brick wall. That's not what you want to see in any of the room. Richard Love, 2006 uh, book, Last Child in the Woods. I think if you, if you have this book, please borrow, uh, let me borrow this book. I want to read it which explores the relation between the natural world and children development that became a bestseller in the US. Okay. Let me know if you have this book. Or maybe, okay, now man, if you know, just let me know. Okay, now, after knowing, understanding that the sign behind what nature does to us, what the trees, the flowers, the leaves, the sound, whatever, and the effect to us as a person, to, to our body, our, to our thinking, to our health, to an extent, we understand the sign and that 
that have proof that indeed is doing something good for us. So, what is that in terms of reading Garden and Park? Don't you think that's going to be a powerful? You read, you bring your book, for instance, a novel, you're reading about something about the trees, a phrase like, I can feel the trees, I can see the leaves moving run by the wind and the sound of the bird chipping up on the truth. You're actually reading and hearing the word that you're reading. I can tell you it's going to be a very powerful moment. Reading it and being in the place where you can actually live, experience the moment. That is powerful. That only talking about something that actually reading the nature in nature. But what about reading other things or doing anything? Learning, doing knowledge sharing or doing whatever it is in nature and realizing that with a book as a base, storytelling or whatever it is. Okay? And don't you think it's going to be even more powerful for all of us? I think so. This is what Ralph Waldo Emerson said. Nature and books belong to the eyes that see them. Nature and books belong to the eyes that see them. This is how I'm trying to describe just now. You're reading a book about nature in nature. It's one part of it, but it's also about the book, how book actually go strongly or reading basically, not just for reading basically, but trying to learn in the nature actually can be a powerful, powerful thing for all of us. I think he, he Ralph Waldo Emerson captured this actually, and I like about this caption. Of course, it's a relate, you can relate to it. Okay, now. Now we understand the sign of, we know about reading, okay? We have been doing reading, spirit reading, storytelling, and all that. We know about that reading. But now we know the sign behind nature, which basically in our life, our garden, parks, uh, the train that we walk, the, the, the hill, the mountain that we climb, the river that we go through for a picnic and all that. It's another proportion in our life. And what is going to happen if we combine these two? Definitely, there's going to be a new narrative for all of us. One thing that I'm very sure of is that this sign will sit behind all our space design, planning, and when we plan and build our own libraries. Two libraries immediately came to mind for me, especially because I've experienced it. Of course, just straight away uh, came to me. But I'm not saying that the other is not good, whatever it is. But yes, Pustaka Negeri Sarawak in Kuching, Pipas is another component that have all this element and all that. The thing is, are we consciously designed that to be as such? Are we consciously trying to use that space, that nature, to be part of our event, our whatever we do activities? Maybe just to encourage reading or maybe other things as well. So understanding this science actually now will be good for us when we want to design, redo whatever with our space planning. When I was in Sarawak, of course, Sarawak there's a lot of nature. And that's a good thing as well, that when I, I visited some of the small libraries, the Pusakan Desa and all that, when we just opened the door, walk on the door, you can see trees. You can see garden. You can see wonderful hill, mountain, just around 
Of course, there are some actually, unfortunately, design a library with wall that's actually block all this. It's a pity for me. This actually reminded me when my journey, when I helped to design Sasarana Kijang, the Knowledge Management Center, and to a bigger extent, the Sasarana Kijang at my old office. We need to get to understand actually why all this and the space, the colors, and the meaning of this and the sign behind it into our building. So we did our best actually to put everything in perspective to bring in the nature inside and to bring insight outside. Meaning to say, you put in a room with the views and that's why you have a lot of glasses around. And also try to bring as, as, as best as possible the nature in where you plant the real tree, flowers and whatnot inside the building. I've seen this in our libraries happen, and maybe with the sign, with the understanding, we can do a lot more. When we understand this sign as well, it helps us into making the right decision about uh, our space, our building, and the planning around it. In fact, to some extent, the layout of our library, our library the inside, the layer of light. We know now, based on these signs, that it is good that all the chef don't put it against a place, a wall with a view that block the view for our stakeholders to see it, read, and do their work. As much as possible, try to push the chef inside for the inn that should not block the sense of view and the openness of this place because we knew now the view will bring we energize our reader we want our reader to stick to be in the library and that's the very reason why i love to go to all these places our library with such um with such a uh, environment where i just go in and engross with the whole thing even i do my work i didn't realize the time passes by actually very quickly because I know when I look, just turn my body or head to the side, I can see view. Something that can really do wonders for me. If you, in the whole scheme of things, if we know enough, the natural sign being what we're doing, for example, for example, storytelling, remember? Maybe it can be more powerful and stick, and people more, more our users want to read, to borrow books. Okay. Maybe storytelling can be in a real environment. If you have the opportunity, try it. Maybe storytelling, do it in a real natural environment around us. Okay, by the way, another sign behind storytelling is actually bibliotherapy. I really need trying to understand when I heard about bibliotherapy, I really wanted to, to, to understand what is this bibliotherapy and the sign behind it. I found out my own conclusion actually, bibliotherapy is actually one of the sign behind storytelling. Because this bibliotherapy, you actually understand fully why and how you should be doing storytelling. You should tell your story. Should what sort of material I think that you should use actually in the storytelling, or if not, even if whatever material that you have, you can actually tune it, make it as such. So the sign behind one of the sign behind to me storytelling is bibliotherapy. I guess it's about actually trying to put these two together. I put here the, the the power of combining the heart and natural sign. We know information sign, library sign, 
in our heart, we know, we understand, we believe and all that. So now, when we add natural sign, when we understand the other sign around us, especially natural sign, like reading, uh, nature, sharing your ku, whatever, when we combine these two signs, actually heart sign, I call it, and natural sign, then actually we can do a lot more. This is the awareness that we want to create, actually. So the tagline or the name of the program, Read in the Park, is actually, as I said, change management event, but to signify that nature and the park itself and to take the opportunity of KL being KLWBC and all the parks actually available in KL area, Beckland Valley, there's a lot more, actually to utilize this park. Now, actually, you can not, not just doing your own program, bring your family or the weekend. I know now it's pandemic, could be a little bit of problem or barrier there. But you can always sit around at home, your garden, and do something with your family, reading or not. At least try to see if there's a change uh, in whatever you do and how you feel and whatnot. I'm pretty sure the combination of these two Okay, will lead to a better well-being for our stakeholders. If we have the good environment in our library, our stakeholders will want, firstly, want to come to us and stay around with us. The most importantly, they will stick to be our stakeholders, our partners, and also to send us in the whole skin of thing, creating that real knowledge-based society or ready society for all of us. I think that's the, the gist of this. Again, imp impressing on that our partner in this region of the park is uh, DBKL. So, yes, utilize their park. They have a wonderful park. We have wonderful park. I know before when I visited this park, it was very busy. I mean, a lot of people. Now, we go then with proper understanding with better understanding. Of course, for all us moving forward, I do actually encourage that we do this Ring in the Park event. Honestly, this is going to be our signature event. And if, uh, inshallah, moving forward next year, we're gonna have this event actually throughout the whole Malaysia. We're gonna do a road show or sort. Or in fact, you can do it yourself. You don't have to wait for us. You can do it yourself. Basically, use the part, use the understanding about reading, about nature, and do a program around it. Your program, initial with objective, maybe like our objective, which is actually change management based outcome to create certain things. If you want to get people to understand, for example, about information literacy, take them to the park somewhere. Maybe when we explain them there, their understanding is better because they're energized and whatnot, maybe. I think it's not maybe. To me, I'm actually I'm bullish. I'm pretty sure that's going to happen, actually. I think you just be Nike. Let us just do it, OK? Again, before I end this slide, coming back to this, uh, Rain the Park, these are only the, the, the four books that I came across that I've read. And then actually prove the sign behind it and get me better understanding. To me, we should be reading, trying to understand the other sign behind our other thing, so that one we understand, especially natural sign, and and bring it together in our work. It can only be uh, be more powerful. Okay, I'm going to stop the slide now. Okay, we are back. Thank you very much for listening. Let me try to bring this uh, to a close. Yeah, as I predicted, it's almost about one hour now. What is my closing for all this? You know, uh, 
Well, if you have any question, please do so. Uh, I think my colleague at the back will monitor the question. Uh, we can, I can try to answer the best I can. Moving forward, uh, as far as uh, read in the park is concerned, as a project, as program, as I said, mentioned, I mentioned uh, initially uh, before. This is going to be our one of the signature program that we're going to do. We're going to do some sort of a road show. We're going to do everywhere around Malaysia, uh, inshallah. But of course, as I said earlier on, you can do this yourself as well. Uh, there's no copyright thing about it. Once you understand the sign, you understand what you want to do, then you can at least do it. Okay. I've talked enough about the need for us to understand the sign behind what we think, what we are doing. Why is it important? I think I'm not going to continue into that again. Uh, what else? Hmm. I'm just going to wait a few uh, minutes. Okay, so far there's no question. Never mind. I think I can bring this to close because I know that this is going to be put uh, in our Sembang Pustakawan as well. It's going to be in a PPM web page. You can always view it again. If you have any question, then you can always directly uh, email, message, or whatever. I'm the easiest person to get in touch with. And I can try to, un to understand the question and ask the question. Uh, I'm sorry, and answer the question accordingly. Okay. I guess uh, with that, once again, I do not know how many actually listening or tune in. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in to listen to me talking about uh, reading in the park or the science behind uh, reading in the park and what we aspire to do. Uh, hope we can uh, do a lot more for us, for our stakeholders, definitely bring it to us. Most importantly, in this time, with the pandemic around us, uh, yeah, being in the park can actually help us a bit more. Uh, once we have the time, once it's dry, well, who to those who are already climbing, uh, hiking, going up mossy forest in Cameron Island or whatever it is, uh, please continue to do so. If you are a trail walker, just around down please just continue to do so if you love gardening yes it's always the best thing to do for you in the morning or evening do what you do add on to that actually maybe bring a book once or twice to read in the park in nature and thank you for tuning in again uh, if there is ever that what I said actually uh, you merasa marah, sedih, whatever, I'm very sorry. Actually, I'm just trying to do what I think is the right thing to do for all, all of us. Okay? So, pick a book. See you in the park. Thank you. Bye.